Hello. Well, it's been another busy week for panels. Um, I'm just painting up the last of this week's trio. Uh, this panel is slightly different from all the others in that I've used the customer's own LEDs and um, we're using toggle switches as well. So when it's been painted, I'll, uh, I'll show you the detail and how we go about mounting the toggle switches. For now, I'm just going to crack on with painting so that I can ship this early next week. It's quite a challenge this because there's a lot of toggle switches involved and uh, they take a lot more time to mount properly. I mean, sure, if you want to drill a hole, that's fine, but uh, generally we, we go to a bit more trouble than that as you'll see in a moment because we uh, when 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 specified we countersink the toggle switches so they can they just look great then you've just got the uh, the switch itself the switch portion poking through and not the ugly washer and lock nut I think they are ugly when they poke through but uh, is what it is but I think on this panel it looks actually quite spectacular I think the customer will be happy once uh, once he gets it yes covering nice. that laser's dialed in nicely at the moment it was worth the expensive service to get it back on track uh, how are you keeping so we're all unwinding from this lockdown at the moment. Seems like it might be coming to an end sometime at the end of June, July. I think July. Um, we normally go quiet. June-ish, June, July. But at the moment it doesn't seem to be abating. So I mustn't complain. It's good to be busy. Though after this I'm going back up now to do some uh, development work on the electronics. I've got a new circuit board prototype to assemble. And I hope to be making an announcement end of July, early August I hope on that. Very satisfying this. I haven't recorded a making video for a while. We've been very busy at it, making lots of circuit boards. But um, I find sitting here in my quiet space so much more therapeutic. I prefer it to the uh, hustle and bustle and noise of the compressor and the pick and place machine. We've just made a, a ton of solenoid drivers and feedback modules as well, I think it was. Yeah, feedback modules. So they're all sat on the workbench waiting for testing. We've got the firmware on them. And as soon as they've been tested, they can, uh, they'll can get packaged up and put in the shelves behind me. I was up at uh, Pete Waterman's last month and earlier this month, or several times. I've been uh, doing a little bit of work on the layout that um, is double O gauge layout that's going into Chester Cathedral in July. I think it's mid-July. I've got a separate video on that um, that I've been making. We made some mimic panels for it, uh, three and uh, it's, he's used servo um, control point motors, servos for points and uh, an integrated frog switching where, where appropriate so we wired, well I showed him how to do it uh, uh, I think he, he was surprised, he surprised himself because he watched the videos 
and got stuck straight into it. So uh, he's definitely a hands-on, can-do person. And uh, the problem is I haven't seen the layout up because it's too big for his um, barn. Is it 64 feet long or something? So I think the first time it's going to be run for real will be in the cathedral. And that scares the heck out of me because it'll be very frantic whatever on the first first run, first connection. Though last week when I was filming we were running we were running a loco up and down to test bits of track and frog polarity and stuff like that. All seem to go reasonably well. The scenic side where the points and crossovers are seem to work. I think the sections for the fiddle yard, Pete wired himself, so I haven't seen that work. I've seen that I've seen the servos installed, but um, not seen it work yet because the uh, the boards are lying on this side. But it's a very impressive model. I think it's in next month's BRM. That's probably in a few magazines. Has it been in Hornby yet? I know it's going in. Um, it is a nice layout though. It's good because it's, um, for me, it's scenery with a railway through it rather than railway with scenery on the end. It's, it's big, it breathes. But uh, I guess he just, he's lucky to, to have it of a size that allows you to appreciate it. Right, I'm going to get busy on this. There's a lot to do. Thankfully, it's all black. I hope. Uh, let's do this bit. The uh, holes for the LEDs here are somewhat larger than mine. We make a three millimeter hole for a three millimeter LED. I think on this we've ended up with a 10 millimeter hole for a three millimeter LED. So whatever the design calls for, I suppose. But I think it'll uh, it'll look great when it's done. I just won't get to see it finished because the uh, the customer has all the lights and switches except for the sample I was sent to confirm fit. I think the customer will be surprised though at how quickly I uh, I completed this. But the reason I went quick on the three panels this week, and they're all a good size, is because um, I want to get onto the onto the electronics next week. And I generally have to clear space before I can do something. I well clear clear time. Time is the killer. Hope you're enjoying our great British summer. <laughs> I remember that afternoon as well. It's supposed to get rain today. Whatever, whenever. It does seem weird seeing such big holes for the uh, for the LEDs in this I keep looking at it and thinking something's wrong because it's they're much bigger I have to remind myself yes it was a different standard but the test fit went fine I'm dying to see the panel when it's painted then I'll let you see it too but you can see them all then Panels with lots of vertical lines that are wide, I do find awkward to paint. All the brush strokes are not natural to me. So depending on how this goes, I might split the painting into a couple of sessions. But for you, it won't matter. It'll all be one super duper video. Oh, I put a video up a couple of weeks ago on the blog about uh, wiring frogs to three way points. I hope you found that informative. I must admit I'd been put off for a while and a customer had an issue uh, so it spurred me on to to shoot a video 
and um, at that point when I was forced to look at it I realized it's actually quite straightforward the instructions are on the pack from well from Pico in this case so I just followed the instructions and it and it worked so I did that a little diagnostic guide and a couple of other bells and whistles and uh, and we're done ended up making two videos one was a quick one to show the customer and then I reshot it with uh, a prop I've got the prop here I'll show you. They're the servos from the uh, from the video, and uh, I laser etched or laser engraved this where the points were fitted, so they were asymmetric three ways, just to show for the video how uh, how it would all go together. In fact, I borrowed the points off Pete Waterman. <laughs> Look, he's just down the road or up the road, uh, so I nicked them off him, and uh, he took them home the other day when he came here. So many thanks for that, Pete. I think I shot them. I had symmetric three-way points and I shot them symmetric and I thought most people probably have asymmetric. So I ended up making the video with the asymmetric ones. I did one of each, but the other video I took down because it wasn't to my usual high standard. Or was it low standard? I don't know. It looked awful anyway. But it was appropriate for the customers. Like, have a look at this. Bish bosh. That's how you wire them up. And it uh, it got the job done. And then I rewired or reshot the video. Even got some lights on it. Check it out if you haven't seen it. There's two or three videos back in the blog. I think I had my first proper day out. Monday, last Monday, it was great. Went to the zoo with my granddaughter and my daughter and my wife. Yeah, pretty good. Walked around the Lima enclosure. It's great now, they've got more enclosures where you can, you can actually go in through double gates and uh, get close to the animals. If you like photographs, I suppose, then you can photograph them without uh, without bars in front of you. I think the lemurs were my granddaughter's favourite. Her name's Nancy. She's brilliant. She's two, uh, nearly two and a half. And it was her first visit to the zoo. So I bought my wife and I and her and my daughter an annual membership. That's uh, unrestricted, unlimited access for the year which is great so hopefully avoiding summer holidays we'll um, we'll have a load more trips the thinking being instead of having to go for an entire day and wear yourself out we can just go for a few hours then come back and do it again and again well that's the theory anyway Does look nice. Mm, good. Mm. Now where was I? Just there. I'm starting to hear more planes flying now, so I guess Manchester and Liverpool airports are uh, getting a bit busier. We're sort of halfway between the two. Depending on the wind, we'll see. We'll be on the approach for uh, Manchester or Liverpool. I don't fancy going anywhere this year, though. I don't fancy the idea of sitting on a plane with uh, lots of other strangers. I'm sure they're all perfectly fine. What worries me is, how do they know I am? Well, 
One thing about this panel, I've left much larger tolerances than usual to cater for the switches and the lights, so it's a little bit less fiddly to paint. And that's a good thing. I think I can proceed at a faster rate. Either that or go back and fix my mistakes later. That's not good though, this panel, I must say. I was worried about whether I could actually fit all the track in with all the electrics. Because when most people want a mimic panel, they just see a piece of track. You know, they draw the track and they're like, right, why can't you make it that size? And of course, you've got to fit all the switches and lights behind it and they all take space. I mean, behind every switch, you've got what, uh, 11 by 10 mil casing or LEDs or whatever. So ooh, that's great. That's all right. My first error, putting my finger down on wet paint. I'm sure it won't be my last, but it's, it's just seeing where, trying to work out how big something will be. And when I go for someone else's switches and lights, i.e. non-standard, it throws all my calculations out a bit because for, for my stuff, I've got the, the macros in the drawing software ready and I know I can do a calculation fairly quickly and know what will and won't fit. But I can't apply the same calculation to this. So I usually eat up more space using these switches. And the only way I can reduce space is to not fit the switches. It's always the switches that take, take the space. LEDs poke them through. Uh, except these are so big. Um, but on this, what, as you'll see, what you'll see when it's finished, I've gone to the trouble to make everything, all the switches uh, are on their own caddies mounted from underneath so that you, can, you could remove a, a single switch without having to take the panel apart just from the rear. The LEDs will just pull out the front there, push fit. And the switches are rear mount but you can you can take any one out without having to take the fascia out of the panel and it's a it's a lot of extra effort to go to that trouble but i think it's worth it should the unthinkable happen and you have to change the switch In fact, this, it's on a base. It's uh, the, I made two bases, one with and one without the caddies, um, just so that I can use this for painting. This is like a first test. And the other one you'll see is all the, all the caddies are screw mounted. So the switch plates, the sw switches fit to a plate that is in turn screwed to the MDF. If it doesn't make sense, because I'm just talking it, then it will do shortly when I when I show you for real. All right. Can I get paint around there? Yep. Down there. Yep. Down here. Oh, looking good. It's going faster than I thought. And then again. It's not finished yet. Well, we're staying at home this summer, so we're having a staycation, which translates to a workcation. So I think we'll just be working as normal every single day. But there's worse things to do, so I don't mind. The sacrifices I make for you. That's both of my viewers. <laughs> it's on there. 
Let's get the down main painted. Get plenty of paint in there. Get it in all the corners. Nothing worse than a bit of text with paint missing. Excuse me. I guess that's the hay fever kicking in. Goes on tight. I think after this I'll put a, I'll have a nice coffee, and I'll watch a little bit of Netflix as a reward. Some of the panels, two of the panels have uh, enclosures. This one doesn't. It's made to a, a non-standard size. By non-standard, I mean a size that I haven't got an enclosure made, designed for. So a customer's going to do their own. I can design it any size you like. It's just that it takes me half a day. You've got to pay half a day. Plus, uh, I have to make one up. So that's two sets of wood, basically. But if you're paying, you can have anything you want. I think this panel is for a DCC Concepts Alpha. I've made them before. I usually decline, but I quite like the design. And at the time the customer ordered, um, I just got an empty panel queue. <laughs> Not anymore. The panel queues never stay empty for long. Um, sometimes they're quite frantic. And I know I quote about six weeks to make a panel. But some recently I've been making some in as little as two weeks. It just depends what I'm what I'm working on. Sometimes I can spend a lot of time waiting for artwork, trying to get artwork approved because they need a change or they, they, they want something changed or, oh, I meant that's uh, green, not black. Or So, you know, I have to update the artwork proof because what you'll get should look exactly like the proof. No changes. And if I'm working on a few panels, what I tend to do is work on a panel, submit it for proof, then go on to another one, and I'll take, an, take the next one down. And I won't go back to the one that was sent for proof until, until it comes back round on the in cycle. That way I can keep things moving. Well, I think I can. The biggest pain for the larger panels is um, I have to make a box for them. It can take me 40 minutes to, to pack them up. These will go FedEx, uh, even though it's UK. Um, that means I'll get next day and uh, hopefully, I say hopefully, I've been looked after a bit more. I've never had a panel broken yet or damaged, but it'll happen one day, I'm sure. I'll do all I can to mitigate it. I ran out of uh, plastic fascia as well, the acrylic, last week. And that was a shock, the new price, everything's gone up. So don't be shocked. Everything's gone up. I 
Ask me which cov colour covers best. Black. Always black. So I've reduced our colour selection to black, blue, green and red. If you want yellow, I'll charge you £100 just for putting yellow on. I want to discourage it because it just doesn't cover. So you got to put three, four coats on. It just doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to do it. Or doesn't seem to want to do it. It looks awful. I generally refuse to paint yellow. Someone's got to be very insistent for me to do it. Okay, spin that round. And get the other side. Ah. I think you can see this panel. I've been chatting away. I presume the camera's on record. If it's not, tough. Tough on me, that is. All right, start here. Yeah, a bit there, a little bit there. Very nice, a little bit there. What helped on this is the customer specified where the switch locations were, so I didn't have to stress about getting them on the track. It's quite realistic in some places they are to the side of the track. So the customer had a good appreciation of what was required. And that makes my life easy. And I didn't, uh, there were no slips on this so Nothing to eat space like a slip in terms of switches. I got all that. By Jove, I think I have. Let's look for the where the paint's the thinnest. Get a bit more on. Looking good, if I say so myself. I always find painting across the grain of the cut seems to take more paint maybe it just absorbs more because I'm going across the ridges I'm just putting paint on on paint that's starting to dry doesn't need it but I think it might look better there's a bit I missed uh, I knew I'd miss a bit because the LED holes are so large They don't distinguish themselves from from the things I've missed. I'm just using the light from the window to shine through and amplify the paint thickness. Even though when it's flat on a piece of MDF as it's intended to be, it all looks black and perfect. I've got the paint in the pot so I might as well put it on.
Though all I can see is black now. It's quite hard to paint black on black. Get a few pinholes near the edges. This helps them stand out. I think we're done. So I'll leave that to dry and uh, let you have a look at it when we can turn it over properly. Uh, there's a bit on the logo there. Whoa, let's get that. There we go. And across. It's the thin lines around the buildings. I've got to make sure I get in all the corners. even though they'll look great from the other side. I may as well put the paint on while I'm here. doing name plates looking good a bit on a bit more on that great so I'm gonna leave that for an hour or two then we'll come back and we'll take a look at it. See you in a bit. Okay, paint's dry. Let's have a look, see what we have. We got the right way up, yes. Nice. So this is Dunsford Abbott. See the, the larger holes for the LEDs? The way this works, if I take a switch, just take the screw off and the washer is you can choose to remove these switch covers so you can take them off and fit a new attach a switch to it and then screw it back on without taking the panel off but if I just push one through let's do this one like so then what we have, or should have, is just the hole for the switch to poke through, so there's no ugly lock ring. And then you can operate the, uh, operate, I don't know if I can hold it, operate the point like so. There we 
we go. Let's get it right. So you can operate the points like so by throwing the switch and the switch is retained by putting the lock nut into, into the receptor here. And also for the LEDs. So here's the uh, customer supplied LED. And I'll just poke this through a hole. It'll feed in the top. Like so. And then you get the LED fitted here. So it's nice and neat. Um, it is a lot of extra work, but hopefully, uh, I hope you'll agree it, uh, it looks more pleasing than having, the, uh, having this affair on the front, which just looks horrible. Also this week we made, uh, we made a couple of other panels. This one looks great, I think, quite pleasing. So here the customer specified some holes, different sizes, don't know what for. But that's come out rather well, three colours. And I did another one here, this is the smallest of the three. No prizes for guessing what this guy's name is. That's quite a nice layout. Single colour. But I hope you'll agree, it's, uh, it's come out rather well. So I have to uh, package the enclosures for these. Here's the smaller one and the larger one. They were cut last, I'll say last week, they were cut yesterday. And um, I'll just let this paint go off over the weekend and then we'll, uh, we'll try and get them in the post for Monday. So I hope you enjoyed this week and uh, more from us uh, next week. Thanks for watching.